Welcome everyone to the light of Zion. The light of Zion is our God's word. Yahuwah's word is a lamp for our feet and the light for the road that we travel. Shine your light, O Yahuwah, let it lead us to your holy mountains. Shine your light, O Yahuwah, let it lead us back to Zion. Shine your light and let it guide us on our journey back to you. Shine your light for it is good for me. And with that I say welcome to the light of Zion. Hello and welcome again to another presentation coming to you from the light of Zion. Um, do me a favor, like and share this channel with your friends, with your family members, let them know of the light of Zion. Let them know of the truth coming out from the light of Zion. It is time for our people to wake up. It is time for the time of our redemption has drawn very close. So share this channel with others. Uh, like, I would like to get a comment from you. I would like to know your opinion, what you think about the information that is coming to you from the light of Zion. So I want to know what you think, what, what is your input, so, so that it can be a two-way communication. What do you like? What would you like? Do you like to see a live presentation? Or do you prefer that I present this pres information so that you can examine them? So let me know what is of interest to you, my listeners, so that we can continue together to move ahead as we look to our God for our deliverance. So again, I am coming to you with another interesting topic to discuss today. And this one is titled, The Ultimate Goal. This one is titled, The Ultimate Goal of God for Creating Humans. The, what is the ultimate goal of God for creating humans? And that's what we are going to discuss today in this presentation. So, moving ahead, in the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 4, there it is written, What is mortal man that you keep him in mind, and a son of man that you take care of him. So the psalmist asks the question, what are we, what is mortal man that you, that God cares about us or that he keeps us in mind concerning all the work that he's doing? So what, what are we? Why, what is his ultimate goal? What is he trying to work out with us? that he created, what is the reason for creating man? That is what the psalmist wants to know. So let's break this presentation down and we will see what the ultimate goal of God for creating humans. 
<clears throat> the question is, what is man that God keeps him in mind? Well, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, verse 27, there it is written, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let him have in subjection the fish of the sea, and the flying creatures of the heavens, and the domestic animals, and all the all the earth and every creeping animal that is moving on the earth. And God went on to create man in his image. In God's image he created him, male and female he created them. So yes, God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness and he created man. So Yahuwah God created man in his image and that is that man should have what? Dominion over the earth as God has dominion over all his creation. God's intention in creating man is for humans to have dominion over the earth just like God has dominion over all his creations, God will give humans dominion over all his creation on earth. <clears throat> In the book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, there it is written, You made him a little lower than godlike ones, and you crowned him with glory and splendor. You gave him dominion over the work of your hands. You have put everything under his feet, all the flocks and the cattle, as well as the wild animals, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes through the path of the sea. So it's written that God made man a little lower than the angels. So we are a little lower than the angels. So, but God crowned man with glory and splendor. That is the ultimate goal of God for creating man, so that man can be crowned with glory and with splendor over the earth. Every other created thing, the animals in the, field, in the sea, on the earth, the trees, everything will be subjected to man. Just like every creation of God should be subjected to God. God created man in that, with that image, to have that image, the dominion over all the things that he has created on earth. So for man to really fulfill our role, Yes, for man made out of dust, for us to feel, really fulfill our role of having dominion over the earth, we need to develop and we need to learn the qualities of God and the godlike ones, that is his angels, if we are going to have dominion over the earth. We need to develop the qualities of God and we need to develop the qualities of his angels. Remember God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So man has to develop 
the qualities of the angels and the qualities of God if we are going to become to have dominion like God over the earth over all the things that God has created on earth we need to become like like God so like God and his angels but God wants humans to become like him even though man was created was made of dust man, God still wants man to become like him so for us to become like God and his angels that is why he said let us make man in our image and likeness because he wants us to become like him so Yahuwah's goal is to gradually teach and develop and raise humans to have the qualities and the likeness of himself and the angels again I say it again Yahuwah's goal is to gradually teach and develop and raise humans to have the qualities and the likeness of himself and the angels. Yes, Yahushua the Messiah confirmed this when he stated, he confirmed this when he stated at Luke chapter 20 verse 34. <coughs> And Luke chapter 20 verse 34, Yahushua the Messiah said this, he said to them, the children of this system of things marry and are given in marriage, but those who have been counted worthy to gain, of gaining, counted worthy of gaining that system of things and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. In fact, neither can they die anymore, for they are like the angels. They are God's children by being children of the resurrection. So Yahushua the Messiah confirmed it, that in the system that is coming, when man will have dominion over the earth, he said that we we become like the angels. Neither are we being married or being given in marriage. He said we will die no more. People, we will die no more. The Father said they are like the angels, and they are the God's children by being children of the resurrection. So God will raise these humans, children up to become like the angels, to possess the qualities of the angels. They will be raised in the image of the angels because that's what God said, let us make man in our image and likeness. So those who will make it into this system who are raised as God's children at the end, we possess these qualities of the of God and the angels. So yes, Yahuwah, when Yahuwah completes his work of create of creating and developing humans, we will become like the angels, but we will reside here on earth to have dominion over all things. So when he completes his work of creation and developing humans to become into his image and likeness, we are going to become like the angels, but we are going to reside here on the earth in order and have dominion over all things on the earth, because that is the ultimate goal of God in creating humans 
when he said, let us make man in our image to have dominion over all his creation on the earth. So that is what God ultimate goal is to raise up human children that will take dominion over the earth and have the qualities and the image and likeness of him and his and the angels. So a good question is this what are the image qualities of God and the angels? What are the image qualities of God and the angels? Well, God is loyal, and his angels, and his servants, both angels and humans, who will serve him, are to be loyal to him. That is one quality of God. He is loyal. And all who will serve Yahuwah God, both angels and humans, we have to develop that same quality of loyalty to Yahuwah. So the angels and humans are to obey, are to be obedient to Yahuwah, our Creator. That is a quality of the angels that human formed out of dust has to learn to be obedient to Yahuwah, our Creator. That is a quality or image of the angels. They are obedient to Yahuwah God. And God wants to develop the same quality in us human children, in us his human children. The angels observe and keep Yahuwah's commands. These are angels' qualities. The angels are patient and they wait on Yahuwah's appointed times. So yes, they are patient and they wait on Yahuwah's appointed time. Likewise, if we are going to be developed in the image of a God and the angels, we have to learn to be patient and to wait on God's appointed times of doing things. We have to be what? Observe the commandments of our God, the things that he said will be done and when it should be done. Those are the qualities that God is developing, wants us to develop, wants his human children to be, to develop these qualities of the angels. The angels, they see the glory and praise of Yahuwah our Creator. Yes, they seek the prayer, glory and the praise of Yahuwah our Creator. They do not seek glory and praise for themselves. They seek the glory and the praise of Yahuwah our Creator. Likewise, we the human children of God, those who will be who will be adopted as children of God in the system to come. We have to learn to not to seek our own glory, but to seek the glory and the praise of Yahuwah, our Creator. These are the qualities and likeness of the angels that humans have to develop if we are going to have dominion over the earth. So God and his angels are mighty in power. That is a quality of God. If we are going to have dominion over the earth, we have to also be developed to have power and mightiness on the earth. But God will transform his children those who are developing this quality will from go from one glory to another until they become as powerful servants of God on earth to have dominion over the earth. So 
to show the disqualities according to what is written in the book of Psalms chapter 147 verse 5 there it is written our God is great and is mighty in power his understanding is beyond measure so power and mightiness is the quality of God keep in mind God said let's make man in our image for man to have dominion over the earth, we have to be what? Mighty and power. Yes, because we have to become like and be transformed in the image of our God, our Creator. In the book of Psalms, verse 103, verse 20 and 21, there is written, Say, so praise Yahuwah, all you his angels, mighty in power, who carry out his words, obeying his voice. Say, so praise Yahuwah, all his armies, his ministers, who do his will. So, the qualities of angels here, they are what? Mighty in power. And they obey the voice of Yahuwah. And that is the image that God wants his the ultimate image and quality that God wants his human children to have in order to have dominion over the earth we have to be transformed to or we have to learn to these qualities in order to use them to have dominion over the earth so, in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 21 and 22, there is written, In answer, Yahushua the Messiah said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what I did to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will happen and all the things you ask in prayer having faith you will receive so the human children of God we have to learn gradually to do what to have power like the Messiah was saying the Messiah spoke and the, and the fig tree withered just by saying it so he said that if we if we have faith and we pray and we can also say to a mountain be moved and be moved, put into the sea and it will happen this this is what God's will is his ultimate goal to develop man to the point that we have what power we become like him having dominion over the earth, over all his creation. So, yes, we are formed out of dust, but we have to gradually be transformed and learn to, and learn these qualities, and develop these qualities if we are going to have um, dominion over the earth. But what has happened so far, at the early beginning of human humans, rebellious angels and the failure of the first human pair. So at the, at the early part of human creation, a human existence, one of the angelic sons of God became disloyal and rebellious to Yahuwah and also and misled the first human pair to also rebel. So in other words, Adam and Eve was tested as to their loyalty 
and obedient to their Creator, but they failed the test. They failed the test. So, just as is written in the book of Genesis, chapter three, verse one to five, there it is written about the event of the event that took place. It's written, now the serpent was the most cautious of all the wild animals of the field that God, that Yahuwah God has made. So he said to the woman, did God really say that you must not eat from every tree of the garden? At this the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. For God has said about the trees of the tree, the fruits of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, you must not eat from it, no, you must not touch it, otherwise you will die. At this the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die, for God knows that in the day, in the very day you eat from it, your eyes will open and you will be like God, knowing good and bad. So that is how this angelic son of God that became rebellious, that became this lawyer, misled Eve and Adam to join in the rebellion against Yahuwah's commands, against Yahuwah's directions. So that caused man to fall short of the image and glory of God because they did not pass the first test. They were misled by the devil to join in the rebellion against Yahuwah, the Creator. So the original serpent that misled Eve and caused the failure of the first human pair is the same one known as the devil and Satan. This is the chief adversary of Yahuwah our creator, the devil. So the serpent is an angelic created being that developed disloyalty and rebelliousness. Yahuwah God will not tolerate disloyalty or no rebelliousness from his creation forever. So he will not tolerate disloyalty and rebelliousness from his creation forever. Not from the angels, nor from humans. He will not tolerate rebelliousness and disloyalty. So therefore, Yahuwah foretold and decreed of what will unfold with time concerning the rebelliousness and disloyalty caused by the devil. So what is it that Yahuwah God foretold? God will crush and exterminate all his enemies and their children. So in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, Yahuwah God foretold and said, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring, offspring, offspring. He will crush you, he will crush your head, and you will strike him in the hill. So yes, Yahuwah foretold from the beginning the outcome of the works of the serpent, the devil. The devil will from Adam and Eve raise up offspring or two human children who will follow him in his rebelliousness and will serve his will. Yes, that is what is foretold. The devil will, from Adam and Eve, 
raise up human children that will follow him in his rebelliousness and disloyalty to God and they will serve the will of the devil. At the same time, God will, from Adam and Eve, raise up offspring or true human children who will obey him and serve his will. So the decree, the decreed end is that the serpent's children will bruise and hurt the children raised up by God. But at the end, the children raised up by God will crush and exterminate the devil and his children. That is the decreed end. That will be the end, the final result that will, that will unfold because of the rebelliousness of this angelic creature. So God allowed the devil, the serpent, to raise up human children from Adam and Eve, those who will obey and follow the devil and serve his will. God will also raise up children that will, human children that will obey him and serve his will. And the end result is that devil's children will bruise and hurt God's children. But at the end, God's children will crush the devil and his children in the herd. So, the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 tells us about this final outcome or this final result when it's revealed according to what is written. It says, So down the great dragon was hurled down, was hurled, the original serpent, the one called devil and Satan, who is misleading the entire inhabited earth. He was hurled down to the earth and his angels were hauled down with him. So the final result is that this original serpent, the devil, who is misleading the entire inhabited earth to follow in their course of rebelliousness and disloyalty to Yahuwah the Creator, he will be hauled down and his angels will be hauled down, his children will be hauled down and they will be crushed in the head as was foretold. That will be the final outcome of this rebelliousness that started in the Garden of Eden. So let's consider the children of God and the children of the serpent, the devil. With time the devil produced and raised up the nations as his his offspring or his children that he is using to carry out his will. Yes, the devil produced and he raised up the nations as his children, the offspring that he is using to carry out his will. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 31 to 33 there is written concerning the nations raised up by the devil, it is written for their rock is not like our rock. Even our enemies understood this. For their vine is from the tresses of so is from the vine of Sodom, and from the tresses of Gomorrah. Said so their grapes are grapes of poison. Their cluster are bitter. Their vine, their wine is the venom of serpents, the cruel poison of cobra. So Moses identified that, acknowledged that the nations, their God, that the nations are serving is not the same like the, our God that we are serving. They serve their God, their father, the devil as God. Yes, the nations were raised to serve the will of their father, the devil. And they have been serving the will of their father, the devil. So in the first book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, No, but 
I said, I said that what the nations sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons or to devils, not and not to God. They sacrifice to de demons and not to God. And I do not want you to become sharers with the demons. So he acknowledged that the sacrifice or the worships of the of the nations, they give it to who? To the demons, to the devil, their father. So that is how the children of the devil has have been raised or has been produced. The devil produced the nation as his offspring, his children, to use in carrying out his will on the earth, his rebelliousness, and um, this loyalty to Yahuwah, the Creator. So the devil has raised himself up as God, and many his children are serving him as God. So with time, also, Yahuwah produced and raised up the nation of Israel as his offspring or the source to raise his children up. From Israel, Yahuwah will raise up his human children to obey him and serve his will on earth and have dominion over the earth. Israel was later misled by the devil and his children to follow the path of disloyalty and the path of rebellion of rebelliousness towards Yahuwah the Creator. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 18 there is written concerning Israel, the nation of Israel, it is written, you forgot the rock who fathered you and you did not remember the God who gave birth to you. So even though Yahuwah raised Israel, Israel up to serve as his offspring, Israel forgot the God that fathered him. They started following the devil. They started serving the devil. They started following the children of the devil to serve the devil. So keep in mind the goal, ultimate goal of Yahuwah in creating human is to raise human children who are formed and who have learned to possess the image of God and his angels. Yes, to possess the image qualities of God and his angels. And we have learned that the angels are loyal they are patient, they obey the commands of Yahuwah, they wait on Yahuwah, and they are powerful like God, like God their Creator is powerful. And that is what God wants for the, His human children to, the qualities God wants His human children to possess. So today you can identify who the children of God are and who the children of God are not. Who did, you can identify the children of the devils, of the serpent and the children of God. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 10, there it is written, the children of God and the children of the devil are evident by this, by this, this fact. So whoever does not practice righteousness does not originate with God, nor does the one who does not love his brother. So that is how you identify the children of, of the devil. Distinguish between the children of God and the children of the devil. Say so whoever does not practice righteousness or what is right does not originate with God. Nor does anyone who does not love his brother, he does not originate with God. So the children of the devil have been practicing lies, bruising and hurting and killing the children of God. 
This enmity has continued as foretold in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Because Jehovah said, I will put enmity between you and the seed of the woman, between your seed and her seed. So there has, there has continued to be enmity between the children of God and the children of the serpent. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 14 is written, For many nations and kings and great kings will make slaves of them, and I will repair them according to their days and the works of their hands, the works of their own hands. So the nations has continued to be in enmity towards the offspring of nation of God. And many nations have continually tried to do what? Um, to bruise Israel, the nation of God. Uh, but God, and to make them their slaves. But God said he's going to repair these nations for what they have done. So in the book of John chapter 8, verse 42 to 44, there is written, Yahushua the Messiah said to them, the children of the devil, he said to them, If God were your father, you would, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I have not come of my own initiative, but that one sent me. So why do you not understand what I'm saying? because you cannot listen to my word. Say, so you are from your father the devil, and you wish to do the desire of your father the, your father. That one was a murderer from when he began, and he did not stand fast in the truth, because the truth is not in him. So when he speaks the, li when he speaks the lie, he speaks according to his own disposition because he is a liar and the father of the lie. So Yahushua the Messiah uh, speaking to these children of the devil because in, during his time the children of the devil already have taken over the promised land to the children of Israel, to the nation of Israel. They have taken it over and have planted himself in this land. And he said to them, you are of your father the devil, and do you want to do the will of your father the devil? So in the book of Rome, of Romans chapter 8 verse 21, it's written that the creation itself will also be set free from enslavement to corruption and have the glorious freedom of the children of God. So yes, the creation of God, which is the nation of Israel, is waiting to be set free from enslavement. That is the slavery, their slavery to the nation, their enslavement to the nation. They are subjected to uh, slavery to the nations. Uh, which was imposed on them at Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 16. Then Israel will have the freedom of the children of God. So Israel, the nation of Israel, the creation of God is waiting to be set free from that which was imposed on them, and that is the enslavement to the nations. Because God said that they, Israel, descend, descendants of Abraham, we have to serve the nations. Then after they will be set free. Uh, look at how it's written in the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 13 to 16. There it's written. Then he said to Abraham, say, Know for certain that your offspring will be foreigners in a land not theirs, 
and that the people there will enslave them and afflict them for 400 years. But I will judge the nation they will serve, and after that they will go out with many goods. As for you, you will go to your forefathers in peace. You will be buried at a good old age, but they will return here in the fourth generation, because the era of the Amorite has not reached yet reached its full measure. So yes, it was foretold that the descendants of Abraham will be taken to lands that are not theirs, and that they will be enslaved and be afflicted even up to 400 years. But God said he's going to judge the nation and nations that they will serve. And after they will come out, in their fourth generation, they will return back to the promised land to inherit it. So, yes, these are the children are distinguishing the children of God and the children of the devil. The children of God is the nation of Israel, the descendants of Israel that God has raised up. And the children of the devil are the nations that the devil has raised up to carry out his will. <clears throat> so, Remember, God's ultimate goal is to do what? Raise up human children who are formed in the image of God and the likeness of his angels. So we are going to look at the model for the human children of God that he wants to raise up to take dominion of the earth. There is a model or a standard that God wants to form or to raise up from human, from his human children that will have dominion over the earth. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 5 to 13, there it is written, For it is not to angels that he, ha he has subjected the inhabited earth to come, about which we are speaking. But in one place a certain witness said, What is man that you keep him in mind, or the son of man that you take care of him? You made him a little lower than angels, you crowned him with glory and honor, and appointed him over the work of his hands. All things you subjected under his feet. By subjecting all things to him, God left nothing that is not subjected to him. Now, though, so we do not yet see all things subjected to him. Say, so we do not yet see all things subjected to him. But we do see Yahushua, who was made a little lower than angels, now crowned with glory and honor for having suffered death, so that by God's undeserved kindness he might test death for everyone. For it is what it was fitting that the one who for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the chief agent of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both the one who is sanctifying and those who are being sanctified all stem from one. And for this, for this reason, he, was, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. As he said, I will declare your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you with songs, with song. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, look, 
I and the children whom Yahuwah gave me. So Yahushua is the model of the human children that God is raising up, those that we take possession of the earth. Yes, the future of the earth belongs to belongs not to angels but to the human children who will take dominion over the earth, who will take over dominion of the earth. The future of the earth does not belong to angels, but to human children that are raised up by God, who will take dominion over the earth. Yahushua was made to become human like his brothers from Israel. And and he will lead the children of God to destroy all the works of the serpent, the devil, and his children. So he has learned obedience, he has learned loyalty, he has learned patience, and he has learned trustworthiness through the things that he suffered in the hands of the children of the devil. So that is the model, the image and likeness that God desired to form on all his human adopted children. That is the image and likeness, the model, obedience, loyalty, patience, and trustworthiness. Those are the image and qualities that God wants to form in all his human children that he will adopt to take possession of dominion over the earth. So, as a human, Yahushua earned the title the Son of God for his being faithful and loyal to our Creator. He earned the title, the Son of God. Yahushua will lead all who are adopted and raised, raised up as the human children of God. Those raised up in the image and the likeness of God and his angels to have dominion over the earth. Because that is the ultimate goal of God, to raise up human children of God that we take dominion of the earth. So in the book of John, John chapter 6 verse 44 to 45, there is written, no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will resurrect him in the last day. It is written in the prophets that will all be taught by Yahuwah, everyone who has listened to the Father and has learned comes to me. So unless the Father, Yahuwah, has chosen you, Unless the Father has taught you of the things that He is doing, what He's raising up as His human for His children, the things He wants from His human children, unless the Father has taught you and has chosen you, you cannot return to the Messiah, Yahushua, to lead you. It is those that God has taught, those who have listened. And those who have developed this quality that God desires in his human children, they are the ones that he will do what? Adopt as his children. And they are the ones that he will send to the Messiah, Yahushua, to lead them to have dominion over the earth. In the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 and to 20, there is written, Say, so look, I and the children whom Yahushua have given me are a sign and it's a miracle in Israel from Yahuwah of armies who resides on Mount Zion. 
And if they said to you, inquire of the spray medium or of fortune tellers who chip and mutter, is it not for their God that a people should inquire? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? Instead, they should do what? Inquire of the law and the written confirmation. When they do not speak according to these words, this word, they have no light. So, Yahushua the Messiah again saying that the children that God has given him, the ones that he will lead, the ones that he will lead for them to have dominion over the earth. They are, we are like a miracle in Israel. God is the one raising these children to at the end take possession of the earth. He is raising his children to worship no other God but him alone. He is raising his children to learn to be loyal, to be patient, to be trustworthy, and to obey Yahuwah's commands and decrees. So Yahuwah is the one raising up his children, his human children, that he will do what? Allow to take dominion of the earth at the appointed time. So the human sons and daughters of Yahuwah will serve no other God except Yahuwah our God. They will not serve the devil, for the devil is not no God, but a disloyal angel that causes rebelliousness. The children of God will at the end crush and completely exterminate the devil and his children and then take over dominion and rulership of the earth to come. In the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 there is written, When he caught sight of many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to, to, to the baptism, he said to them, you offspring of the vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Yes, Yahushua identified, he mentioned, there is a wrath that is coming for all the children of the devil, the vipers. There is a wrath or a judgment that is coming for all the children of the devil, because God has already foretold that the end result is that the children that God is raising up we do what? We crush the head of the devil and all his children that he has raised up on earth. So that is what is foretold. So Yahushua is the model for the human children that God is, ra we, we ra that God is raising up. He has demonstrated obedience loyalty, patience, trustworthiness, the qualities of God that he will want in all his human children. He is the model for the human children. <clears throat> so at the appointed time, support at the appointed time, at the appointed time, Yahuwah will give to his human children the help and the support of his heavenly angelic army in order to do what? To crush in the head the children of the serpent and of the devil and the devil. So at the appointed time, Yahuwah will give support to his human family. He will give them the support of his heavenly angelic army in order to crush the head of the devil and his children. And that is why the Pharisees are trying and Sadducees are trying to escape this judgment that is coming for them. The 
because of this coming judgment, Yahuwah has also warned the nations, the children of the devil or the serpent. In the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, Yahuwah has warned them and he has told them to do what? The nations to do what? Prepare for war. Because he is coming with his angelic army, heavenly angelic armies, to do what? To crush the head of the devil and his children that he has raised up. So yes, Yahuwah will go to war in order to crush his adversaries, the devil and his raised up children, the nations. He's going to crush them and his children, the children of God, will take dominion over the earth. In the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 40 to 42, there is written, For I raise my hand to heaven, and I swear, as surely as I live forever, if I sharpen my flashing sword and prepare my hands for judgment, I will repair back vengeance on my adversaries and bring retribution to those who hate me. I will make my arrow drunk with blood and my soul will eat flesh with the blood of the slain and the captives with the heads of the leaders of the enemy. So be glad you nations with his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants and he will repair vengeance to his adversaries and he will make atonement for the land of his people. <clears throat> so Yahuwah said that he do what? He raised his hand and he swore that as, sure, as, as surely as he is alive, he will sharpen his flashing sword and prepare his hand for judgment and he will repair vengeance on his adversaries. Remember the devil, the serpent is the chief adversary of Yahuwah. His children also have joined, followed their father the devil in being an adversary of the, of the Yahuwah the Creator. So Yahuwah said he would do what? Make his arrow drunk with blood. And he will repair He will repair the nations for all they have done to his people, his children, his his raised up nation Israel. So he will repair vengeance for his adversaries and he will make atonement for the land of his people. So even though the devil and his children has been bruising and hurting the children of God, even though they have killed so many servants of Yahuwah, even though the nations have taken over the land of of Yahuwah, of Yahuwah's children. Yahuwah said he will do what? Repair vengeance to his adversaries at the appointed time. And he's going to make an atonement for the land of his people. So the human children of God will be raised up Yes, the human children of God will be raised raised up. First John chapter five verse eighteen and nineteen there is written. So we know that everyone who has been born from God does not practice sin. But the one born from God watches watches him, and the wicked one cannot take hold of him. So we know that we originate with God. But the whole world is 
lying in the hands, in the power of the wicked one. So yes, God watches over his children and nothing will happen to them, even though the world is now lying in the hands of the wicked one, the devil. So even though the devil is controlling, is in charge of the earth today, he has raised up the nations, his children, and he has used them to be in charge or to control what is going on on the earth. We know that we originate with God. And at the appointed time, God will raise up his human children to take dominion or charge of the earth. Yes. At the appointed time, God will raise up his children who are being who are being bruised by the devil and his children. God will raise them up in order for us to do what? To take dominion of the earth. In the book of Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 there is written, Come and let us return to Yahuwah, for he has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days, and on the third day he will raise us up and we will live before him. So yes, the children of God, the nation of Israel, is under punishment, being humiliated among the nations, being trampled on by the children of the devil. But God promised that he would do what? After two days, he would do what? raise up his children up, we raise his children up, and we will live before him. So yes, after two days, that is after two thousand years, Yahuwah will raise up his human children to take over dominion and rulership of the earth. He will raise up his children, that is those transformed into his image and the likeness of his son. Yes, these are the ones that will be raised up, the ones that are transformed into the image and the likeness of his son. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 to 31, it is written, We know that God makes all his words cooperate together for the good of those who loved who love him who love God those who are the ones called according to his purpose again the ones the children of God are called his purpose is for us to take charge and dominion of the earth but we have to first be formed in the image and likeness of our God because those 29 reads, because those whom he, he gave his first recognition, he also formed for ordained to be patterned after the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, those whom he for ordained are the ones he also called and those whom he called are the ones he also declared to be righteous. Finally, those whom he declared to be righteous are the ones he also glorified. So yes, the people that God first what recognized or first for knew are the ones that he has also for them to be patterned after the image of the Son. So the Israelites, Yahuwah in the book of Amos says, You only I have known out of all the families on the earth. You are 
the only ones I have known. So you, the Israelites, are the ones that will be patterned after the image of the Son of God, the likeness of the Son of God, to possess those qualities of loyalty, um, faithfulness, uh, obedience, patience. These ones God will form, will do what? He has offered them to to be glorified these ones with his son. But they will be formed in the image, transformed in the image of his son to form his human children. Those that will take possession, I mean dominion of the earth to come. So, finally, the children of God are being transformed. So, in, yes, the children, the human children of God are being transformed into the image and qualities and likeness of our God and His angels. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, there is written, Therefore I appeal to you by the compassion of God, brothers, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, a sacred service with your power of reason, and stop being molded by this present system of things, but be transformed by making your mind over, so that you may prove to yourself the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we are asked brothers to do what? Be transformed in our mind. Don't go on following this system of things that is being ruled by the devil and his children. Be transformed and be molded so that at the end you we prove yourself to be the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You, the people of Israel, are the ones that God has known, are the ones that God wants to transform into the image and likeness of His Son. That is what He has in mind when He said, Let us make man in our image and likeness. So that man, you can take post dominion of the earth. So be transformed in your mind. Stop following the system of things. The system of things as being ruled by the by the children of the of the serpent. Know that you are the ones that God has. God is raising up to take possession or dominion of the earth to come. For at the end, the children of the devil, the devil and his children will do what? Will be crushed in the head. But those of you brothers who are formed and transformed in your minds to possess into the qualities and image of the Son of God will also be glorified with him when he appears. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, there is written, All of us, while we with unveiled faces reflect like, like mirrors the glory of Yahuwah, are transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, exactly as is done by Yahuwah the Spirit. So, yes, Without shame, without covered, veiled faces, we don't need to be veil our faces anymore. But with our unveiled faces, we will keep on reflecting like in a mirror the glory of our Father in heaven, the glory of our Creator, as He transforms us into the image and image quality and likeness of His Son. 
as the human children of God that we possess have dominion of the earth at the end. For the world, the earth to come, is not subjected to angels, but to the human children of God it will be subjected to. You, we are the ones that we have dominion, take dominion of the earth to come. So what is foretold is that, yes, the devil and his children that he has raised up on the earth, the nations, will be crushing the head. Yes, they will be crushed in the head. And the children of God, the nation of Israel, the ones formed in the image, transformed in the image and likeness of the Son of God, because he was made to be like his brothers, like us. Those of us who are transformed into this image of the Son of obedience, of loyalty to your, to your Creator, of being patient, of seeking not your glory, but the glory of your Creator and the praise of your Creator. Those of us who have developed these qualities will be adopted as God's children to take possession and dominion of the earth to come. Again, I thank you for listening for paying attention up to this point. I know this is a long um, presentation. I am winded, also winded, you know, but I think it's, it is fun. And um, I hope that the spirit of Yahuwah will help you and give you understanding and help you to get the sense of it so that you can get the sense of it, so that you can learn obedience, so that at the end all of us will be transformed into the image of the Son of God, so that we can take dominion of the earth to come. Until I come to you again from the light of Zion, remain blessed, keep seeking Yahuwah, and keep praying for His help, and keep seeking Him until he transformed, transforms you into the image of his son. Again, bye until I come to you next. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with others, let others know of what our God is doing, let others know that, yes, the time is coming when Yahuwah will raise up his children, to take for dominion of the earth to come. And that time is drawing very close. So share, share, share with others. Let them know what is coming. Until I come to you next, remain blessed.